Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go over some of the problems on practice exam number one. Uh, you can find practice exam number one in uh, files on Canvas, go to practice exams, it should be there. Or you might be able to find it near one of the lecture videos. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm, I'm not going to do every problem and I also don't have the actual exam because my printer is out of ink at the moment, so I'm having to just look at the exam separate and write out the problems here. So I'm actually going to start at number three. It says for this relation we have negative 10, 1, negative 3, 1, negative 2, 9, 9, 4, Right, a bunch of ordered pairs making up a relation. And then if you remember, certain relations uh, are functions based on whether each input corresponds to exactly one output or not. Right, so um, let's first just write the domain down. Okay, so for this domain, I'm going to write this in set notation. The domain <clears throat> is the set of all the first components. So we'll have a negative 10 in there. We'll have a negative 3, negative 2, 9, 2. And negative 10 is written again, but negative 10 is already accounted for. So this would be the domain. Right, I'm just going through the parts. Part two, for this relation, the range would be the set of all the outputs. In other words, the set of the uh, second components. So I'll write one. One is repeated, so I'll just write it once. Nine, four, zero, two. So this would be the range for that relation. And then part three is, is this relation a function, and then why or why not? <clears throat> so we would need that each input, each member in the first component, corresponds to exactly one member of the range. Right, so one way that we've done this is through these diagrams. So if I write the domain over here, and then I'll write the range over here. And I'll go ahead and write the correspondences based on the ordered pairs. So negative 10 <coughs> goes to one, negative three goes to one, negative two goes to nine, uh, nine goes to four, Two goes to zero, and let's see, yeah, it looks like that is it. Negative 10 actually also goes to two, so let me not forget about it. And that's the problem, actually. So this point over here would say that negative 10 also goes to two but that violates our definition for a function, right? Our definition says each member of the domain, each number over here in this case, needs to correspond to exactly one member of the range. Negative 10 violates that because not only does it go to one, it also goes to two. So I'll say <clears throat> not a function. And there was also this part about why, so I'll I'll say why as well, um, because negative 10 goes to two places. I'll just put it simply like that. All right, so that's number three. I'm gonna skip number four, because it's very similar. I'll go to number five. It says graph the equation. <clears throat> so it says graph 
y equals negative x minus 3. The main way that I've been teaching you guys or encouraging you guys to graph is through the point plotting method. So that point plotting method. <clears throat> Um, basically, pick x's, find y's, and then plot those those x and y pairs. And you're graphing. If you do that enough times, then you're just building the graph of that. So what I mean is form a table, x, y. I'm going to pick x's that are allowed to be picked, right? I can pick any x I want in this case. So I'll just pick like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, something simple. And then what I'm going to do is plug those numbers in to figure out y, right? So now I'm taking negative 2, plugging it in for x. Negative times negative 2 is 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Now I'm taking negative 1, plugging it in for x. Negative times negative 1 is positive 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Plug in a 0 and so on. Right? I get negative 3. Plug in a 1, I get negative 4. Plug in a 2, I get negative 5. So these would be some points you could plot. So just going ahead and doing that a couple times. Maybe I'll just plot two of them to make it easy on myself. Here's, here's one of them. So if I call this negative 3, this would actually be the y-intercept, right? And I'm just choosing this one for no good reason, but just FYI, this would be called the y-intercept uh, because it has a 0 in for x. Right, and also we could see it's a y-intercept because there's negative 3 sitting right there in the equation. <clears throat> and then maybe, um, yeah, maybe I'll just also plot this one, which is no special point. So 1, 2, and then maybe this will be negative 5 then down there. So typically treating this, by the way, as x, and this is y, right? So those would be two of those five points, and I'll go ahead and just draw my best line through there. All right, so that would be a, a graph of this equation. So that's number five. I'm skipping number six, going on to number seven. I'll post the solutions to everything, of course, but just trying to keep it simple in these videos. So it says with this function, s of z, negative two times z to the fourth plus two times, I tend to put these little, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, belts on, on my z's just to differentiate them from the uh, twos. And then we're just looking for s of negative two. And then it says simplify. So this is part i. Okay. So to find s of negative two, that means the output given that the input is negative two. So I'll say s of negative two equals negative two, and then I'm replacing any occurrence of z with negative two in parentheses. And then I'm using the order of operations to simplify. One way to do this is with the calculator, right? So I'll type in negative two times parentheses, negative two raised to the fourth power plus two times negative two minus one. I know I didn't show that, but I'm hoping we're kind of getting used to our calculators at this point. Let me know in the discussion if, if you need calculator help. Oh. 
part j is actually the next one. So it's a different function, r of s, which is 3s cubed minus s plus 1. In this case, we're finding r of 0. So r of 0, similarly to the one we just did, we replace any occurrence of s with 0. So what we get is 1, right? Everything vanishes. This whole thing goes away because you're multiplying by 0. So that's number 7. I'll actually go on to number 9. So skipping down to number 9. It says for the linear equation negative 6x plus 5y equals 30. Find all intercepts, x and y, right? Your intercepts is ordered pairs. So for x-intercepts, we always let y equal 0 and then solve for x. So I'll go ahead and do that. So negative 6x plus 5 times 0 equals 30. So this piece, I'm letting y equal 0 to look for an x-intercept. So we're left with negative 6x equals 30. Divide by negative 6. So x equals negative 5. What that would mean then, as an ordered pair, we'd have negative 5, 0 as our x-intercept. Right, for the y-intercept, it's a it's similar thing. But we let x equal 0 and solve for y. Okay, so I'll have negative 6 times 0 in this case, right? And then plus 5y equals 30. Sorry. In this case, this piece vanishes, and we're just left with the 5y equals 30, and solve for y, so divide by 5. So y equals 6. So our y-intercept would be 0, 6, right? The 0 goes in the x location for the y-intercept. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and do number 11, actually, and that'll be the last one for the video. Um, as I said, I'll put the solutions in full in a PDF next to the video. All right, number 11. <clears throat> so it says, here's a table I created that describes my daughter's height. Um, or length, right, if she's a baby. As a function of time, my daughter's height h measured in feet is a function of her lifetime t measured in months. So yeah, some data there, 0, 1.6. So this is telling us at zero months, she was 1.6 feet long, right? So right when she was born. So if I were to look for h of four, that would mean the height after four months so I'd be looking at the table, the specific cell that has 4 and 1.8, right? Because the 4 tells us, okay, we're looking at that number of months, and then the 1.8 tells us that that's the length or the height that we're interested in. And that would be feet. And then it also says explain, <clears throat> so meaning... She was 1.8 feet uh, long, right? Because she's really not standing at four months. OK, 
Okay, so meaning she was 1.8 feet long at four months old. <coughs> Excuse me. What is H of seven? So from the table, actually, there is no seven. It looks like it should be between 1.8 and 1.9, but let me show you what I'm looking at. We have these two cells. One of them is this uh, four 1.8 cell. And then the other one is this eight and 1.9. So seven, yeah, I think logically would be somewhere in here. So we would expect the height maybe to be like 1.85 or the length, what have you. But my point is that this is all a guess, right? And that we don't actually know. So I'm just gonna say unknown, actually, for that one. All right, everyone, good luck on your exam.